Four new stories for you. Firstly, at last, Ethiopian PM Abiy has released a statement about Russia-Ukraine conflict. Uh, today is the day eight of this conflict, uh, but Ethiopia was silent just a few hours ago. PM Abiy spoke on that. He released a message, a statement. What did he say? Is Ethiopia standing with Russia or Ukraine? Uh, secondly, Abune Matias, head of Ethiopia Orthodox Church, just an hour ago released a statement. He says, there are illegal bishops and patriarchs in Ethiopia. Who is he referring to? Thirdly, viewers, two journals uh, in Africa have openly announced their support for Russia. Who are these two channels? And lastly, Eritrea yesterday opposed uh, UN General Assembly's resolution against Russia about Russian attack on Ukraine. We have a video clip for you showing Eritrean representatives speak at UN General Assembly. Firstly, the Ethiopian PM has at last broken the silence regarding Russia-Ukraine conflict. A statement has been released by the PM today. Uh, uh, Ethiopian government came under criticism yesterday when Ethiopia did not take part in UN General Assembly resolution uh, condemning uh, Russian attack on Ukraine. Ethiopia absented itself from UN General Assembly session. PM Abiy, a Nobel Peace Prize winner, was under criticism. Uh, Gata also spoke last night. He condemned uh, Ethiopian government's absence at the General Assembly session. Now, PM Abiy has released a statement. What is he saying? Uh, the subject uh, of this uh, uh, statement is uh, call for restraint. PM Abiy says that the uh, world is interconnected. What happens in one corner of the world, its uh, reaction, its shocks are felt in other parts of the world too. As uh, the world has seen in the ongoing COVID-19 crisis. Secondly, he says that Ethiopia knows uh, the consequences of war because it has seen uh, it recently. That uh, the consequences are not only economic but also social social fabric of the society is torn apart by a war. And thirdly, he is calling upon all parties to Russia-Ukraine conflict to exercise restraint. Lastly, he said that no country should be isolated at international conflict resolution institutions. We can sum up yours that Ethiopian government is not condemning Russian attack on Ukraine. Instead, it is opposing uh, the attempt by the US and Western countries to isolate Russia. We saw a uh, Human Rights Council meeting yesterday uh, during which uh, more than 130 uh, international diplomats uh, walked out when Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov was due to deliver his speech. So that is what Ethiopia seems to be condemning. That at international level, no country should be isolated. Engagements should continue, which I back as well. I think, yes, uh, uh, severing of ties diplomatic ties, it's not a solution to conflicts. Uh, but Ethiopia is openly standing with uh, Russia. Yes, it's not backing Russia, but since it's not condemning Russian attack on Ukraine, so we can say that uh, uh, Ethiopia is uh, in favor of uh, Russia, not Ukraine. Secondly, we would uh, Abune Matias, head of Ethiopia Orthodox Church, just a short while ago released a statement, a message. Uh, he says that uh, Orthodox Church uh, uh, priests are peacekeepers. Are these peacekeepers playing their role? 
there are 500,000 priests in Ethiopia. The statement says, are these peacekeepers playing their role? Secondly, he says that uh, there are illegal bishops and patriarchs in Ethiopia. What's the solution to these uh, announcements uh, of illegal bishops and patriarchs? Uh, should they be persecuted? Should they be uh, punished, condemned? Or people should just keep quiet? He seems to be referring to, I think, Tigray, because Tigray now has its own uh, patriarchate. We have seen some letters leased by Tigray church elder, elders. Tigray Orthodox Tigray Church seems to be splitting with Ethiopian Orthodox Church. That is what he seems to be referring, that there are illegal patriarchs. Are there other patriarchs as well in, in uh, Ethiopia? Uh, secondly, uh, my translator uh, sent this translation to me of Abu Nematiya's statement. And he said that the word used in the statement is patriarch. They are illegal patriarchs. So is Abu Nematiya's referring to Tigray Orthodox Church patriarch? And lastly, he says that talks should be held. The church is being tested internally and externally due to ongoing conflict. People should pursue peace. People should call for peace. I think the Orthodox Church, if, if it wants to stay united, it should invite uh, Tigray Orthodox Church for talks. Uh, its team, its elders can be sent to Tigray. Why is that we have not seen any engagement between a Tigray Orthodox Church and Ethiopian Orthodox Church after the announcement by Tigray Orthodox Church split? Ethiopian Orthodox Church of Addis Ababa, led by Abu Nematias, must uh, take the lead. Uh, it should uh, listen to the grievances of Tigray Orthodox Church. They should sit and talk instead of condemning uh, illegal patriarchs. Uh, thirdly, was two African journals uh, have voiced their support for Russian attack on Ukraine. Firstly, a Sudanese journal, journal uh, Hamdan Dogolo, he is called Hamati as well. He traveled to Russia a few days ago. Uh, and he has openly supported Russian attack on Ukraine. Secondly, General Mahuzi. General Mahuzi is from Uganda. He is Museveni's son, Yuvari Museveni, uh, Ugandan uh, ruler for the past, uh, I think, three decades. He is his son, and he has also voiced open support for Russia. General Mahuzi says that in 1962, uh, the U.S. threatened action against Cuba when the USSR uh, tried to deploy missiles to Cuba. Now, Russia is trying to defend its uh, territory as well uh, as uh, NATO is expanding. So, he is backing Russian attack on Ukraine. Lastly, we have a video clip for you. It is from yesterday's session of UN General Assembly. Five countries supported Russia in the session yesterday. Eritrea was one of them. Eritrean representative at the UN General Assembly delivered a speech. What did he say in his speech when Eritrea opposed the resolution? condemning a Russian attack on Ukraine. Watch this video clip. Thank you for watching. Thank you, Mr. President. Eritrea is taking the floor in explanation of vote after the vote on the draft resolution A slash ES dash 11 slash L1. Eritrea firmly believes that respect for sovereignty, territorial integrity, and political independence as enshrined in the United Nations Charter, are sacrosanct. 
principles and should be respected by everyone at all times for the attainment of sustainable world peace. Eritrea's vote is demonstration of its uncompromising stand for peace. Its position is against internationalizing, incessant rhetoric, and imposition of unilateral sanctions, which regrettably further polarize international relations and escalate the situation with enormous implications for civilians. Instead, we have consistently opted for world regions to be given the needed space and solidarity to address political problems. The situation between Russia and Ukraine raises serious concern with political, economic, and security ramifications for Europe and the rest of the world. It requires immediate resolution by giving more chance to diplomacy. We hope that the ongoing talks between the two parts on the Belarusian border yields a quick and acceptable agreement to stop the war and pave a foundation for peace in the region. Eritrea opposes all forms of unilateral sanctions as illegal and counterproductive. Eritrea, the country that has been subjected to such measures by the West for two decades, including new sets of unilateral measures, understands that sanctions do not resolve problems of peace and security. On the contrary, they only hurt innocent people and undermine the road to peace. It will be remiss if I don't address disturbing reports that African citizens living in Ukraine are facing difficult to cross the borders. We call on all countries to facilitate safe passage to people fleeing for safety.